Time for our daily deep dive into the weather for the Mahoning and Shenango Valleys. This is weather for Weather Geeks on Thursday evening, the fourth day of April 2024. Only four days to go till the eclipse. And we're going to talk about the eclipse, of course, in this video. But first, as I often like to do, I like to point out to interesting weather things that happened on the current date in weather history. And, you know, one of my favorite kind of weird statistics for our area is two of our bigger snow events, one day snow totals for our area were not during the winter. One was in November of 1950. Another was on today's date, April the 4th, 1987. A foot of snow. Can you imagine a foot of snow in early April? But we dealt with that back in 1987 on today's date. This was a not well forecasted system. A lot of surprise snow totals, not only locally, but in much of the mid-Atlantic states, even in the parts of the, the southeast, especially in the mountains of the southeast. Uh, this was very problematic because it was not expected. Of course, forecasting prowess and technology uh, has advanced a lot in the last 37 years, but uh, even by mid 80s standards, that was a pretty bad forecast and quite a snow event back on April the 4th. Now, in terms of 2024, it's not been snow, but rain. It's been our story. In fact, despite today's pretty modest rainfall totals, only a tenth at the airport, uh, we have had the, the wettest first four days of April on record, officially at the airport, 2.7. But of course, we've had some localized amounts, well over three inches um, since the beginning of the month. Officially at the airport, that's 2.21 inches above the average through the first four days of the month. And of course today went uh, as planned. We had rain showers, we had snowflakes, we had soft hail, we had grapple. Um, grapple is one of those terms that um, some people may not be familiar with. Grapple is kind of a, a hybrid, if you will. It's kind of, it's not snow, it's not hail. It's kind of in between. It's basically snowfall happens and then the snow falls through a layer of what we call super cooled water droplets. Super cooled water droplets are droplets that stay liquid even though the temperature is below freezing. That can happen sometimes, especially when you're at certain pressure levels in the atmosphere. Well, anyway, the super cooled water droplets freeze or rhyme or kind of adhere to those snowflakes. And what you get is kind of something that is the consistency of dipping dots almost. Um, it, it's soft, it's crunchy. It's not as hard as hail. A lot of true hail falls out of thunderstorms. Gropple much more common in the spring and the fall seasons uh, around our part of the country. It happens a lot in, in March and April. It happens a lot in oh, late October through uh, the rest of fall and even into early winter. All right, speaking of you know snow, we're getting into the time of the year that we can see our last measurable snowfall of the season. In fact, we had our last measurable snowfall last year in March. It was on March the 29th. The 30-year average date of the last measurable snowfall, April the 10th. When we talk about measurable snow, we're generally talking about more than just flakes or flurries, but something that stuck a little bit on the ground. A lot of times it's a pretty small amount, but measurable snow can be anything more than a trace. The 30-year average is April 10th, but you know we've got a variance of dates on here. We had a few years in a row, or a couple years in a row, where it was very deep into the season. Back in 2020 and 2021, we had snow on May the 9th. We had snow on May the 15th back in 2016. So there's variance here, but looking at the pattern going forward, I would say odds are reasonable that any snowflakes we see on Friday may be some of the last we see. Um, for the season. We did not officially have measurable snowfall at the airport today, even though we did have some snowflakes in the air. As of about 7.01, we're kind of uh, seeing a decrease in coverage. Pretty good uh, rainbow weather this evening with a few showers still out there and some holes in the clouds just before sunset. I've already gotten a couple of pictures of rainbows sent to me, so watch for those early on this evening. But there'll be an uptick in rain and snow shower activity later on tonight into our Friday morning. And as I talked about last evening, this is all the responsibility of a pesky cutoff low pressure system uh, that continues to kind of slowly pinwheel across the southern Great Lakes and making some slow eastward progress into the mid-Atlantic states. We'll be close enough to this feature that once again on Friday, bleh, just not very nice. Clouds, some sunny breaks, occasionally a rain shower, occasionally some wet snowflakes, maybe even that grapple. Uh, here and there once again on Friday. The last of the precipitation though hangs on through Friday evening. I think we'll be precipitation free by daybreak on Saturday. We're left with clouds for a lot of Saturday during the daylight hours. Maybe some last minute sun, but more appreciable sunshine is coming our way on Sunday. All right, let's talk about the eclipse coming up on Monday. Uh, the jury is very much still out as far as how favorable 
uh, conditions will be here locally. I'm pretty confident that it'll at least be partially favorable. We're looking at data here that's based on over 200 model simulations. The European Ensemble System, the GFS Ensemble System, and even the Canadian Ensemble System. You can see how many you know different model runs go into all those different Ensemble Systems. You add them all up, it's over 200. When you blend them all together, this is what we're looking at right now as far as odds. 43% odds of conditions being favorable for eclipse viewing. Now, I don't think it's going to be bright and sunny Monday, but favorable would be just some fair weather clouds in the mix. 38% of the members show somewhat favorable conditions. In other words, they're a little cloudier. 19%, uh, you know, kind of in the category of very annoyingly cloudy. I'd, you know, based on this data, there's still a one in five chance that it's just a little bit too cloudy to f fully enjoy this coming up on Monday, but we remain cautiously optimistic that conditions will at least be partially favorable for the eclipse on Monday. Our official forecast looks like this. It'll be a mild day Monday. Now, there might even be a shower on Monday, especially morning, midday. Don't forget the eclipse is an afternoon thing. It starts around 2, reaches its crescendo around 3.15, and ends at around 4.30. I think any showers are likely to be before the eclipse, and it's not going to be much. We should be dry for much of the afternoon with temperatures making their way into the 60s. You know, it's going to be until 2099 before we have a total solar eclipse once again in Ohio, but in the U.S. as a whole, it's about 20 years into the future. A couple of states, really just Montana and a very tiny sliver of North Dakota, will have a total solar eclipse in the summer of 2044. A uh, much bigger event will come in 2045. Again, not for us, uh, but this will be a total solar eclipse that runs from Northern California down into Florida. Um, so, but that's, you know, 21 years away. And again, it'll be until 2099 before Ohio is once again in the path of totality. That is 75 years from right now. All right, so we'll update the eclipse forecast, the weekend forecast, and much, much more coming up on Friday evenings. Weather for Weather Geeks, thanks for watching on this Thursday evening, and have a great rest of your night.